There's a new report out by the Anti-Defamation League that has identified hundreds of members of the right-wing extremist group, uh, Oath Keepers, that are serving as current law enforcement officers. Now, this information comes from leaked membership lists that were obtained by the uh, Anti-Defamation League Center on Extremism, which includes, as well as law enforcement, elected officials, and even members of the military. That's current members of the military. Uh, the Anti-Defamation League Center, this is according to the, the uh, Associated Press here, on extremism had poured over more than 38,000 names on leaked Oath Keepers membership lists and had identified more than a 370 people it believes currently work in law enforcement agencies, including as police chiefs and sheriffs, and more than 100 people who are currently members of the military. It also identified more than 80 people who are running for or served in public office as of early August and has been compiled into a database published by the Transparency Collective Distributed Denial of Secrets. Now, the Oath Keepers, of course, <clears throat> is a group that was founded in 2009 by Stuart Rhodes, by the way, is facing some uh, rather serious charges related to January 6th, seditious conspiracy, uh, specifically, that organization is a loosely organized conspiracy theory fueled group that recruits current and former military police and first responders. They promote the belief that the federal government is out to take citizens' civil liberties away and paints its followers as defenders against tyranny, which is interesting because I've never seen anyone from the Oath Keepers talk about how, in some respects, they're right. The federal government has taken some civil liberties away. Uh, for example, habeas corpus. Uh, you had other issues where, you know, uh, the Obama administration, and then, of course, following that, the Trump administration had used the Espionage Act uh, against whistleblowers and journalists. Julian Assange, it's a good example. Reality Winner, another good example. Edward Snowden, on and on. You can go on the list. Had the Oath Keepers ever spoke out in, you know, in favor of these journalists who are, again, First Amendment, right? It, Constitution. No, of course not. Of course not. At least I haven't seen it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, now, that said, look, the Oath Keepers are an extremist group. Uh, and they rose up about the time that a black man became president of the United States. So following inaug uh, Obama's inauguration, membership in many different uh, extremist right-wing groups had increased. Not only that, but the number of extremist groups also increased uh, because I think mainly it's because racists couldn't wrap their brains around the fact that people elected Obama. And, and I don't think it's because, oh, you know, he's a, he's a little left wing. No, no. Obama's health care plan is a Heritage Foundation plan put in place by Mitt Romney, but scaled up for the country. <laughs> so, in fact, a lot of his positions are actually incredibly moderate to conservative. No, what, in reality, what fueled this, I think we know, it's racism. Pure and simple. Uh, and look, you also have an issue with the right wing now believing in white replacement, uh, which has become a huge talking point. In fact, uh, if you're not familiar, white replacement theory is the bonkers idea that Jews led by George Soros are intentionally shipping in immigrants to replace white people. I, I always ask, replace them how? I mean, are, are, they, are they taking somebody from Guatemala, putting them in the country and then taking someone out, that would be replacement, right? Uh, are they doing that? No, <laughs> that's not what's happening. I, I'm not I'm not getting replaced by somebody named Juan next week, okay? That's not happening. Bring somebody from Guatemala over here and put them on a pathway to citizenship and they can get jobs, they can work, they can pay taxes, they can become a citizen, they can have a family, uh, you know, they can, they can buy a home, they can do all these things. Generally, I think that's a good thing. But right-wingers say, nope, 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 can't do that. Now, the other uh, thing is, oh, well, they're, they're taking our jobs. 
well, if they're legal immigrants and they're legally able to work here and they're willing to work harder than you, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't get your job. Sorry. But not sorry. Now, undocumented immigrants, that's another issue. And I think that is a nuanced issue because here we have a system where corporations exploit undocumented immigrants for cheap labor. And then, of course, you have Republican politicians that don't want to fix that issue so they can fear monger about it and get votes. I, again, remember, Republican brains, right wing brains are conditioned for two things, disgust and fear. So that's why you hear Tucker Carlson constantly talk about how immigrants are filthy and disgusting. And then the fears of not only immigrants coming in to take your job, your house, but black people coming in to, you know, rape your wife or whatever, your daughter, uh, and the, the, the thugs, and they're coming for you, Antifa, blah, blah, blah. Fear, disgust. The two things that run the Republican brain. Now, as far as the Oath Keepers, they also rely on fear and conspiracy theories. Now, the fear, of course, that the government's coming to take your stuff. To, to take your house, to, you know, strip you of your rights, to take your rights away. Uh, ironically, it seems to be the rights that are being taken away are usually from Republicans that do it, not in all cases, but, uh, for example, abortion rights, reproductive rights, right? Now, the reason for that, of course, is for power, generally. They figured out that you really can't sell the idea of giving all your money to the rich, to the poor and the middle class. Generally, most poor and middle class people would be against all the money being funneled to the rich, going from you, a direct transfer of wealth, from you through your taxes to subsidies for rich, giant corporations. Uh, and so instead, they make things up. They talk about, you know, these culture war issues, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's mainly racism, fear, hatred, et cetera. That's explains a lot why uh, why Donald Trump was elected, honestly. Uh, you can also add that, you know, Hillary Clinton ran a, a pretty, pretty tone-deaf campaign, ineffective campaign, so to speak. Uh, and look, Trump got elected, and this is why Oath Keepers wanted to keep him in power. Because what did Trump do? I mean, along with, of course, giving the rich a massive tax cut, he fought those culture wars. He spread... That fear, that hatred. He demonstrated that he hated who they hated and went after them viciously. He took the gloves off the military, which led to more civilian deaths in the Middle East. More civilian deaths in Afghanistan. More civilian deaths everywhere that we had a drone program. And look, uh, the Obama-era drone program was terrible enough as it is. And of course, the, so was the Bush era uh, drone program. But under Trump, the, the, the drone program got even more deadly, bombed even more innocent people, created even more terrorism, ironically. But great for defense contractors. Oh, oh they absolutely love that. Uh, look, not only that, but Donald Trump massively supported ICE. ICE agents tried to crack down on protests against police brutality, you know, even the peaceful ones. So that's why, of course, Oath Keepers loved him. And I think it's kind of ironic. I mean, Oath Keepers were there in 2015 in Ferguson, but they weren't out there supporting the Ferguson protesters that were protesting against police and police brutality specifically. No, they were on the side of police. They were on the side of government. But not big government. No, no, no. State government. We're, we like state government. We hate big government. That's why we're going to go out there, put on our military fatigues, and pretend we're in a civil war. Now, the report also notes that even for those who claim to have left the organization when it began to employ more aggressive tactics back in 2014, it is important to remember that the Oath Keepers have espoused extremism since their founding. And this fact was not enough to deter individuals from signing up. Now, specifically, these individuals who were like, oh, no, uh, Oath Keepers, what are you talking about? Uh, you, you know, I don't uh, I don't really have anything to do with them. Now, I'm going to I'm going to show you their excuses here 
um, because the Associated Press reached out to some of them. In fact, um, some of these officials who said that they were briefly members years ago and were just no longer affiliated with the group. Others, of course, denied being dues-paying members at all. One of them, Sean Mobley, Sheriff of Otero County, Colorado, said this, Their views are far too extreme for me. Mobley told the Associated Press in an email that he distanced himself from the Oath Keepers years ago over concerns about its involvement in the standoff against federal government uh, against the federal government at the Bundy Ranch in Bunkerville, Nevada, among other things. Hmm. Okay. Uh, South Dakota State Representative Phil Johnson, who won a June Republican primary in his bid for re-election, told the Associated Press that he had paid for a one-year membership back in 2014, but never received any of the Oath Keepers literature. Oh, you know, I, I, just, I never got the booklet. They forgot to send it. Mm. Or attended any meetings, or renewed his membership. Jensen said he felt compelled to join because he believed in the oath that we took to support the U.S. Constitution and to defend it against enemies foreign and domestic. He wouldn't say whether he now disavows the Oath Keepers, saying he doesn't have enough information about the group today. Really? Uh, Phil, Phil Jensen, do you live under a rock? Do you not read anything? Do you not see the news? Now, he said this, quote, uh, Back in 2014, they appeared to be a pretty solid conservative group. I can't speak, with them, uh, speak to them now. 2014 was the same, same year they were shooting at federal agents with the Bundys. Really? And since then, by the way, they have made national headlines. As I mentioned, they were already at Ferguson. They also had threatened the Oregon State Capitol building and had offered to be a security detail to anti-gay Kentucky clerk Kim Davis, who refused to do her job and yet would also refuse to leave her job. Hey, if you're not going to do your job in the government, signing marriage licenses for gay people because it's legal, well, then you should not be in the job. You should leave. No, no, no. She refused to leave. And uh, of course, the Oath Keepers who, who say, oh, we don't we don't like discrimination in any form. We don't believe in that. Decided they would still offer to be personal security. For Kim Davis. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, but look, all of those things. And, and the point is. That was national news. That was everywhere. And yet, you, you, did, you never heard of them? You didn't have enough information, sir? A again, I think that's total bullshit. Okay, you want to claim that you've been hiding under a rock for the last few years. Okay, not buying it at all. Oh, but there's more. Uh, the Anti-Defamation League also said it found the names of at least 10 people who now work as police chiefs and 11 sheriffs. All of the police uh, chiefs and sheriffs who responded to the Associated Press said that they no longer have any ties to the group. Mike Hollinshead, sheriff of Idaho's Elmore County, said this. I don't even know what they're posting. I never get any updates. I, I guess I uh, forgot to subscribe to the newsletter. Oops, I, I didn't hit the radio button. Little check mark. Ah, what are you going to do? He also says, I'm not paying any dues for membership fees or anything. Uh, now there's more. Holland said a Republican said he was campaigning for sheriff several years ago when voters asked him he was he was familiar with the Oath Keepers. He said he wanted to learn more about the group and recalls paying for access to content on the Oath Keepers website, but that was the extent of his involvement. Right. Sure. Benjamin Boak, police chief of Oskaloosa, Iowa, recalled getting emails from the group years ago and said that, oh, you know what? Uh, it was a friend. The friend must have signed me up. I didn't sign. I don't remember signing it myself. You know, I, but I've never been a member. And I don't know. I don't know anything about the group. Never heard of them. Who, who are they? Oath keep. Oath what? Who? Huh? 
<laughs> you, you know, my best friend, Bob, you know, he's always me, signing me up for weirdo militia stuff. I mean, I, I can't help it. <laughs> he just does that. <laughs> oh, Bob, what a card. Really? Total bullshit. Uh, Eric Williams, police chief in Idaloo, Texas, also said in an email that he hasn't been a member or had any interaction with the Oath Keepers in over 10 years. Again, that would make it 2012. He called the storming of the Capitol, quote, terrible in every way. I pray this country finds its way back to civility and peace and discourse with one another. Look, look, uh, there's a good reason why I believe that a majority of these people are being, shall we say, less than honest. I think they do agree with the Oath Keepers. This is my personal opinion. It's conjecture. I think they do agree with them. But I also think that January 6th, yes, I agree. It was too far for a lot of them. Maybe they liked it personally in their minds, but then realized, oh, crap, I'm a law enforcement officer, and they were beating police officers. Oh, oh, God, oh, crap. Oh, no, that's not good. I can't openly be associated with that. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to give you a quote here. This is from Rachel Carol Rivas, interim director, uh, deputy director of research with the Southern Poverty Law Center's Intelligence Project. She talked to the uh, Associated Press and said that many associated with the group were often those who wanted to be considered respectable in their communities. Now, uh, respectable went right out the window after January 6th. Now, it should have been out the window beforehand, but uh, of course, apparently we have different opinions on what is respectable or not for a police officer, but okay. Um, she said this, the image of being associated with January 6th was too much for many of those folks. But, you know, the dangerous conspiracy theories, those are fine. The anti-government, you know, violence and rhetoric, totally fine. But the insurrection that happened to be based off of those, not fine. Ah, right. Gotcha. But look, the overall point here that really is the most disturbing part of this entire thing is that here we have hundreds of police officers, military members, and politicians that are in these membership roles that have been named. Again, there's only 10 that they spoke to, okay? That would return their messages. What about the other, you know, several hundred that they have, including the politicians, right? That have run or currently serve in office that are members of this group, of this, uh, you know, uh, this, this anti-government conspiracy, you know, uh, movement, militia, basically. That is deeply, deeply disturbing to me, and it should be disturbing to everyone else, too, who's watching. Uh, whether or not you're a conservative or, or liberal, progressive, centrist, it doesn't matter. The fact that you have people in government that are serving in government as your representatives that actively despise government and don't want to make things better, don't want to do anything better. Well, other than, of course, break everything. I don't know. That seems to be a problem. I think that, call me crazy, but if I think that if you hate the idea of government, maybe you shouldn't serve in it.